Hello, friends. Welcome to episode 156 of the Note Coach podcast. I'm your host, Suzanne Kohlberg. This is a follow on episode. So if you haven't listened to 155, I'll oh, just listen to this one anyway and go back. But I'm welcoming back the amazing Dr. Manuel Powell. Manuela, I should say. I apologize. I talk too fast and sometimes I leave off bits. <laughs> <laughs> And where we wrapped up the last episode, one of the themes that came out is with people pleasing, with mind reading, with assuming um, that we say things like, if they loved me, they would. Like, if they loved me, they would appreciate that all the things that I do for them. Or if they loved me, they would ask what I want to do or things like that. When we don't actually ever explicitly state that, you know, I don't want to go and watch an Avengers movie or I don't want to go on a holiday to camping or I don't want to. And the thing where we were wrapping up the last episode, so I really want to start here with you, Manuela, is you're giving an example of, say, a couple is invited to a party and one of them's like, oh, I just don't want to go to this. And unbeknownst to them, the other one is also like, oh, we've, we've already been out so many times this week. Neither party communicates to the other, so they just RSVP and end up going. And so I'm sure listeners can recognize that one. Or if not, here's another one that I see a lot with my clients. If you live close to your parents and so you ask them to babysit, like you're going out or you're working or you have some event on and you're like, could you babysit the kids? You would be quite happy to hire a babysitter or or source someone else, but you assume they love watching the kids, of course. And so you ask them and they're actually thinking in their heads, I, I, I want some time to myself. Like I love my grandkids fiercely, but I don't want to watch them every single weekend or every Monday after school. But you don't actually say uh, not this week or I'm feeling a bit run down. And so there's this total like miscommunication because they might think if they love me, they wouldn't ask me every single week. And the other person would think, well, they they love me. So if, if they love me, they would say if it got too much. But no one's actually talking to anyone. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And that one, I actually had that experience with my now ex-mother-in-law who lives in the same town as I do. My family just lives like 5,000 miles from me. And my, you know, the, the, the kid's grandma live here. And I remember asking her right when we moved, like, listen, I do have a babysitter. I want to know what, what the deal is. Like what, it's just like, you, ne- you will always ask me, you will ask me. And I was like, okay, I will do so. If you promise me that you will say no, if you don't want to do it, because I can't find other ways, but like, I, and she's like, no, 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 you always ask me. And then if I can't, then you go find someone else. So that was established, right? So now I have, you know, the freedom to ask her because I know she's going to say yes or no. And if she doesn't want, she says, she said, no, literally today she said, Hey, can I babysit? Can I get the kids this weekend? And I was like, you know what? I don't want to do that because I haven't been with a whole, with them for a whole weekend in like three weeks. Can you do next weekend? And she's like, Oh, next weekend I'm busy, blah, blah, blah. That was fine. I was like, all right. So I said no to her. And then she said no to me and everybody's happy. Like nobody, you know, if I had said yes to her and let the kids go, then the kids would be mad because they already said that like, hey, we haven't had a whole weekend with you. And it's like, it's just so much assuming. And then everybody, like, it's just so much harder on everybody else. That's such a great example of clear boundaries, clear communication, clear back and forth, and not either assuming or making a no mean anything. So another example, yeah. um, my I've been recently re-watching Modern Family. I love that show. And there's yeah. this one episode where Haley, so she was like um, early 20s and she used to be a party girl and she's now dating Andy who's um, more reserved. And as an offhand comment, she says to him, I miss party Haley," or something like this. I'm probably badgering the recap. Yeah. But anyway, he's like, oh, so he's like, oh, she wants to party. So he's like, oh, okay. So anyway, they end up going to this party. They're both miserable, but neither of them are <laughs> communicating it to each other. I think they end up <laughs> going to Vegas And like blowing all this money. And at the end of the episode, one of them kind of hedgingly says something and the other one's like, oh, let's just go home. I haven't wanted to do this for days. But nobody had said anything (laughs) because they both assumed And here's what can happen in these these situations, which is the same of the first example you gave with the couple that doesn't want to go to the party. It might happen. They both don't, neither of them want to go to the party. Neither of them said anything. One of them came and say, hey, so-and-so invited us. And the other one was like, yeah, sure, cool. And I have to go. So they both go. 
And eventually at the party, something might happen that they're like, oh, I hate being here. And then they say to each other, wait, but what do you mean? I'm here just because of you. And the other goes, no, but I'm here because of you. And now we have a fight because like both of them, like I'm doing this for you, but like, nobody wants to be there, right? So the mind reading and the assuming in people is a very subtle thing that happens in people, please, unless you're like paying attention and looking for it because you think that, well, if they knew me, you know, well, if they knew me, they knew I wouldn't want to go to the car. If they knew me, I they knew I would not want to go to this restaurant. If they knew, if they loved me, if they whatever, like, no, if you if you love yourself, just freaking tell people what you want and what you like. And you also, maybe you love parties and that particular day, you don't want to go to a party and that's totally fine. And yeah, it's also yeah, even it's fine true, that to go to the party day. if you don't want to go. But just as long as we're like, oh, okay, I don't want to go. You really do. I was like, oh, man, I really do because there's whatever reason. I'm like, okay, you know what? I can do, I can compromise for you because also relationships have that. But everybody knows what's going on. It's not like, oh, dang, we we made ourselves do that. No, you can you can decide consciously. Yeah, I'm going to do that for you. I can. It's not, it's not a big deal. And there's such right. little examples too. Like, so my husband and I have very different tastes in movies. It's very hard for us to find a crossover. So sometimes one of us will acquiesce and go, well, I'll go to this and then you choose next time. And it, as long as you don't can't stand it, like if you can tolerate it, it's okay. Right. And not that long ago, the new-ish, well, new to us, Batman movie, the one with Robert Pattinson came, was on, you could watch it on the streaming service. So we're watching it and I'm like, I can't stand this. It's what I'm thinking in my head. And anyway, we get like 10 minutes in and I was like, honey, I'm sorry, I can't watch this. <laughs> And he's like, yeah. I can't stand it either. And we're like, what else is there? <laughs> it was just so funny because right. I was continuing to watch it because it was his choice and he thought, yeah, and he was continuing to watch it because it was our compromise. Neither of us were enjoying it. And so sometimes right. too, um, there was another one, some one that just was too violent for me. And I was like, he was like, well, do you mind if I continue watching it and we have our movie time another time? I was like, yeah, sure. Um, So oh, it's course. just about communication and, and understanding that, yeah. It doesn't mean anything about you if you don't like the same thing or want to go to the same thing. And right. that people aren't mind readers, even people you've been with or known for long periods of time. Yeah. And like you're gonna change and they're gonna change. Like it's it's really one of the most important things you can do in relationships, especially um romantic relationships, is to always clarify and to always ask even the clarion finds like, oh, what do you mean by that? Because a lot of times we, I don't know, read a text or listen to, hear something that they say and like, oh, this is what they mean. Again, with the mind reading and the, and I'm like, wait, what do you mean by that? Are you, you know, like what's going on there? And just say, hey, you know what? I didn't like, I actually didn't like that. Yesterday that happened with my boyfriend. He said something on a text that I felt was very mansplainy. I got the phone, <laughs> I called him. And I say, hey, baby, first of all, love you so much. I need to tell you something. You know, when you said this and this, I felt like it was a little mansplaining. Can you not do it this way? Because like, do you, do you see what I mean? And he was like, oh, yeah, no, I didn't mean that. I'm like, I know, I know you didn't, but that bothers me the way you said that. So let's just find another way. And what? And everybody is happy instead of me, people pleasing him and being like, oh, I know he doesn't mean anything. So I'm not going to say anything. And then this happens next week, next month five more times and then one day I just like rah, rah, I hit because I'm carrying all this resentment and he doesn't know anything about this he doesn't know this bothers me at all right so obviously this makes for a relationship that's less genuine because there's this one thing that I'm always taking and not saying hey please don't do that I don't like when you do that right I yeah. love that. If you just That's said. such a great example. First of all, you called him. You didn't let it go back and forth in text because there's tonality and stuff with right. text that can get out of hand. Second, you start with, I love you. And yeah. this is something <laughs> not like when you message this, yeah. you know, and, and it felt a little yeah. mansplaining to me. You didn't say you are being mansplaining it like, you know, totally. um, and yeah. what can we do going forward? So you can co-create the solution together rather than, as you said, because so many yeah. people are like, oh, he's just that way or she's just that way. And it's like, so we're going to oh, no. tiptoe around it. Um, and also yeah. it's like, if we are tolerating a behavior that is basically like having a splinter under your skin and, you know, it's just yes. getting bigger and bigger and bigger. I, I yeah. personally wouldn't want 
somebody tolerating me and going, oh, that's just the way she is. Like, for example, you and I are both sweary fairies. (laughs) It's the way we are. (laughs) There are places where I will rein that in. Like when I go to visit my mom in the hospital, I don't go, fucking how are you? Like, no. (laughs) Um, There are places where I will be more mindful of my language, but there's a difference between if you come into my house and ask me to not swear in my own space versus like when I, or if I went to, I was going to say if I went to church, I don't know why I would, maybe if somebody was getting married or something, but you know, there are places where I would not be less me, but maybe tone it down or be more mindful of the situation or like things like um in my house, uh, we don't have shoes inside, but other people, they wear shoes. But, you know, so it's just when I go to their house, I'm not going to say, well, you have to take your shoes off in your own house. That's just bizarre. Yeah. 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 And there's so many of these things that, as you said before, like that we might be doing because you're like, well, you know, if they loved me, they they would know this. And I was like, no, but but maybe they don't. And they would be so happy to do that for you. Right. As, as I said in the other episode, like my ex-husband did not know that making the bed every morning is, I mean, although I made the bed every morning, he didn't know that he, he did it. It would be such a big deal for me. And then he started doing it. And I communicated that to him. We figured this out. And then I said it to him. And then he started to, because like, well, it it really doesn't bother him to do it, but he didn't know it was such a big, you know, so like such small things, but the small things often are the things that make or break a relationship. So I think the more we can not assume and actually ask I'm like, hey, and remember that, you know, intention is great and all that, but in fact also has as the mansplaining text, it, yeah, it felt like this to me. So let's just, you know, be mindful of that. And of course there are things also that he's very, not because I do that, he's also open to say, hey, you know what, that, that thing that happened, like I also don't like that very much, which I totally didn't know that I was doing. I'm like, oh, okay, be more, more mindful of that. And then you can have a relationship that is like, so so much more genuine and loving because you know exactly where you stand and there's no like I'm doing this for them and hopefully they'll notice and then they're going to do this for me and it's not a conscious thought we're not actually con- thinking that but yeah, that's, that's the checks and balances thing I was talking about on the previous episode yes. if you're like I'm going yeah. out of my way for them they don't even know it so that's that's the whole thing so that they'll go out, yeah. out of their way for me and it's kind of like yeah that that doesn't translate it's kind of it's actually really manipulative it's funny how people pleasing can be covertly manipulative because it's like i'm going to act like this so that they can act very manipulative it's actually very and people don't realize that it's like no you're doing that you're not actually being nice i'm quote air quoting here because the nice part is that but um, you're not being nice because even if it's unconscious, you're doing that so people like you or so people feel better or whatever, instead of being genuine. And, you know, Brene Brown, when she researched um, compassion, the one thing, there's just one trait that is the common thing between people who are the most compassionate. And that trait is that they have really strong boundaries because then, you know, you can only be loving to other people if if you really, you're loving them genuinely, you're not doing things for them because you have to. And when you're people pleasing, you're doing it because, well, I'm just going to do it because I, that's the thing that I have to do because that's how I grew up. I'm not going to say anything. I'm going to be polite. I'm going to be nice. Yes. I love that. And one last thing before we wrap up, because we're at time that you said that I just wanted to bring attention to is the simple question of asking like, you know, what did you mean by that or um, something? Because it's it, to us, when we say something, it is obvious to us, but because we're thinking it and we have the context and the backstory and the layers, like the most obvious example I can think of is, uh, you. I think, you know, Denise Litchfield, shout out to De- Denise Litchfield. Yeah. She's a, um, <laughs> she's a psychic medium. She sent an email out recently saying um, 40% off readings until the end of September. And so I read that and I was like, oh, okay. What, like she wants to finish the month strong or whatever. And anyway, she said to me, oh, I, I 
it didn't have as big an uptake as I thought. And I said to her, well, you only had like two spots available. And she's like, what do you mean? I'm like, between now and the end of September, your calendar is full. And she's like, oh, no, they can book it any time to the end of the year. The booking needs to be done by the end of September. Oh. And I was like, oh, well, I'm like your number one fan. And I didn't read it like that. I read it like needs to be done by the end of September. Yeah. So like, what do you mean by the end of September? To me, it was like delivered, like, you know, last minute yeah. reading. And to her, it was like, no, no, any, anything. So, you know, sometimes just that simple question, what did you mean? She's like, what do you mean? What did I be like anything? And I was like, bookings by the end, like paid right. for. And I was like, yeah. that's not how I read it. And I'm, you know, so sometimes we can say something and it makes total sense to us. And we, someone else asks and we're like, oh, <laughs> That was totally not it. Yeah, exactly. So if you can take anything from this conversation is just don't assume, even if it sounds, especially if it's on the modes of communication, they're not face-to-face. If it's texts or emails, like, hey, what do you mean by whatever, right? And I'm not being like, what did you mean by that? Explain yourself. No, just like, really? What, well, that's why what I loved that how you rang. You say that? When you say, what did you mean yeah. <laughs> with your voice? There's a curious intent. Whereas if if I write yeah. something and somebody texts back, what did you mean? Like, especially if it's in shouty caps, but like I might read that as, what did yeah. you mean? I'd be like, oh, what so do you mean tonality. by that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So thank yeah, you so much. I would for- say like, if I, sometimes if I, if I text, I would say like, I'm genuinely curious. I'm just asking, right? You have to be like, okay, calm down. This is literally just a question. Yes. But the better, the best thing to do is really just to, to be face to face. Like, oh, I, I actually just want to know what that means. Cause this is, this is the story that I'm telling myself. It's that it's this whole thing. And yeah. And not- sometimes too, when you, yeah. when you volunteer that, depending on the relationship, you know, this is a story I'm telling myself, the person was like, yeah, I had no idea. Like I can see that now. I don't no know how idea. many times I've said or written something. And someone's like, what I took that to mean is, and I've just been like, oh my goodness, not at all um yes. so yeah anyway we're at time thank you once again for joining me Manuela let the listeners know what it is that you do and where they can find you I'm a life coach for women in midlife and they can find me on my website it's manuelapowell.com m-a-n-u-e-l-a-p-o-w-e-l-l.com thank you so much I love how you spelled it out because the last episode (laughs) totally totally wrecked it but um 100 follow Manuela on go to her website follow her on Instagram watch her reels there's this one with a bat I will say no more totally worth watching (laughs) Casimir and I've watched that like a hundred times it's hilarious if you look at the view numbers you're like a hundred of those are from Australia (laughs) thank you everybody crazy (laughs) bye for now